Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys for everyone in this beautiful world whenever you're watching this video Welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi a short video today guys because I'm really busy I need to be back at home at 8 in the morning again uh, Because some uh, movers come to move some stuff out of the house um, Four charts really amazing charts a trading tip a travel tip a little bit news that is really exciting and Something else but like watch the video till the end because you know all my videos are packed with information and we're gonna start with the charts today over here. BAM! The first chart of today guys is a beautiful chart again uh, on which you can see the peaks and you can see the bottoms and when we had that bottom that's mostly that orange part we can see a retest and that retest is a very important part of the whole cycle because of that retest we get the confirmation that we again can go up again guys now look at the moment we had that beautiful peak we had that uh, 61.8 fibonacci levels then we had that bear market then we had that blue line we came above it because that's when we turned orange and now we had the retest of that line again so that's the same retest we saw already there in 2019 and in 2014 guys and this is leading into that next bull market again so for me very beautiful chart that shows you again yes this is the moment to buy bitcoin the second chart is this one we see cycle one cycle two cycle three cycle four by the way pause these videos if i'm talking too too fast guys because i don't have that much time but beautiful also here you can see the calculations of the bull market the second cycle took in a total 61 bars uh, that's around 800 days the third cycle took around 70 bars that's almost 955 days and cycle four yeah what is it going to be is it going to be 71 bars is it going to be a bull market of thousand days uh, yeah then we end up somewhere in september 2025 like i've been sharing with you guys already now for months with my own chart this chart is made by someone else so you can see also other people's opinion guys pause the video and discover a little bit more just analyze all those numbers again the bear market always almost 12 months and then we had a beautiful bull market again so enjoy that chart next one this chart also showing very visually uh, how beautifully it is uh, the first bull market there 364 days and then we had a 406 days huge run 539 days uh, we were having it until the halving and then from the halving it was all again 525 days then from the halving it was again 546 days so now we had 532 days uh, let's see from the halving what is going to happen will we have a bull market of 500 days let's see this chart is just showing you that the bull markets and the halvings always are kind of in line with the days now we have a beautiful chart here that was talking about the mining you can see the minor revenue from block rewards is going down that's the orange area of course and we can see then from the next halving it's going to down a little bit more so the block reward decreases every time and that means the scarcity is also increasing so yes when that orange block goes 50% of that per previous one again the scarcity of Bitcoin will dramatically increase which makes it beautiful for the price to go up because something that is scarce the price needs to go up yes and then, then we have the last chart the Bitcoin hollow waves you can see that blue area on top is increasing and that's the people that are huddling Bitcoin longer for 10 years so the bigger that area becomes the more hodlers are in the game and these hodlers already hold bitcoin for 10 years and it's beautiful to see that these amount of people from 7 to 10 years 10 years and 5 to 7 years all these are increasing and we can see the short-term hodlers decreasing which means people start to understand the game guys beautiful chart i hope you really enjoy the charts guys yes i just want to add one more thing to the charts is that like I hope you still remember the last couple of videos where I talked about that Gaussian channel. I talked to you guys about, let's see if we now, after touching that midline, we'll go up to the top line around 27,000 again. That is exactly what we are doing now, guys. We are going to that top line. And as you see, we had another Bitcoin pump. Now, let's see if we can break it and uh, take it to another levels. But when it comes to Bitcoin, zoom out in Bitcoin, guys. Look at the bigger picture. Halving is around the corner. And zoom in at life. Enjoy little things like a sunrise and lagers again. There is not even a sunrise now because I'm too early. Because I needed to get up really early to get all these uh, all this information to you on time so I don't miss the rest next appointment now let's jump into the next part the trading dip 
The training tip is a very simple one. It is FOMO. Never FOMO back in, into a trade. Let's see, you go into a trade along. You take a beautiful profit over there. Now, at that moment, this new feeling will start to arise in your, in your mind. Oh shit, did I take profit too early? Could I make more profit? Or uh, should I buy back in? Never do that. That's the worst thing you can do. You did a good trade. You took your profits. There will be another trade passing by and take that one. Don't FOMO back into that one because if you FOMO in and when you FOMO in, you know exactly what's going to happen. Bam, the price will plummet and your profit is gone. When you have a profit, take a breath, wait for the next trade to pass by. Don't FOMO in again because you think you missed the maximum profit. I'm not even gonna go to the beach guys, I'm just gonna stand here because I really don't have too much time. Um, there is a very important news coming out and the news was on Cointelegraph and the news was uh, the miners will have a mining cost from the halving around 30,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin around that halving April 2024 is not above 30,000 US dollar per Bitcoin, the miners are making loss. This is already what I've been telling you for over a year now and you always like, yeah, what does he mean? Now you understand what I mean. Because of the halving, the miners make 50% less Bitcoins every day. They create, they mine 50% less Bitcoins. So the Bitcoin price needs to go up for them to be able to break even with all their monthly costs. The rent of that huge building, the salaries of the employees, the electricity, the hardware investments, all that stuff, they need to break even. And they are breaking even now because the Bitcoin price, the Bitcoin mining price is around 15K. But if that one moves up with 100% to 30K, then yes, the Bitcoin price needs to go up as well. Because from the halving, either they mine twice as much Bitcoins as they are doing now, which is impossible because they are gonna mine less Bitcoins, or they need to double up the size of their company, which also will increase the cost, or the Bitcoin price needs to go up to 30k so that they can still break even with the amount of bitcoins that they will be mining from that moment on and that yes will be 50% less uh, than at the moment so very simple mathematics bitcoin to 30k minus break even they are happy we are happy win-win situation from the halving the bitcoin price will be between 40 and 50k in my opinion I do think they want to not only break even, I think they want to make profit. So that was the news for today. If you want to read the news on Cointelegraph, there's a beautiful article. Uh, second news was, of course, the SEC again postponing the spot ETF. I start to slowly hate the SEC and Gary Gensler. Fuck them both. <laughs> I hate that. Why would you postpone the evolution of technology? Everyone wants it. Even BlackRock, the biggest investment company of the world, wants a spot ETF. Why the fuck are you postponing it? Didn't you fill your pockets with enough Bitcoins yet, Mr. Gensler? Do you need more Bitcoins before we can fucking go to the spot ETF? Man, I really start to hate that dude. I think even the US lawmakers couldn't push him, so there is something going on over there. Maybe this guy has some control in any kind of way because else these lawmakers would have pushed him and they would have accepted the spot EDF from the 1st of October. So probably something else happening. Maybe he's part of the World Economic Forum and all that other stuff. Maybe he's waiting for a Black Swan event. Who knows? Uh, let's see. But that was the second part of the I'm not going to give too much attention to this ugly, bold guy. Bam. My travel tip for today is uh, a lot of people ask me always, Didi, um, but if I don't know if I would like that traveling with my whole family, uh, why should I sell my house now directly? Like, that's like a huge step. Yeah, it's a huge step. You don't start with selling your house and start to travel if you never traveled. Maybe you should start with a road trip. A road trip is a lot of fun. Take your kids and your wife in a camper van or whatever else, a beautiful car with a tent on the roof, you know, these, these foldable tents, and do a road trip. Do a road trip of two weeks where you're stuck together for like two weeks, 24 seven. If you survive the road trips with too many fights and everything, and you like it, and maybe you love it, yeah, maybe you can extend it to a huge trip all over the world. But for me, you need to start with baby steps. Try it with a road trip. If that road trip was really fun, or like a two week holiday with a camp uh, tent was really fun, maybe then you can take a one month off of your job and then go for a month to Thailand and try that for a month. 
do you enjoy that maybe then you go the next time for three months like that's how we did it we went for three months but we enjoyed it so much that we didn't want to go back so we stayed seven months and after seven eight months we went home for like a couple of things to, to organize a couple of things like selling the house with bitcoins yeah and then we understood oh fuck no this is not what we want we are gonna extend our traveling for the rest of our lives because we want to have a flexibility and the flexibility for us was that new stability so for us yes it started also with baby steps so if you want to start this life maybe start with a road trip and maybe then extend that road trip to the rest of the possibilities when it comes to traveling that was the traveling tip for today my inspirational tip for today guys is uh, very, very cool i think don't giving a fuck is the most powerful tool that you can have just don't give a fuck whatever they say don't give a fuck whatever they do don't give a fuck whatever happens don't give a fuck if you don't give a fuck you're always in control don't give a fuck just give a fuck about what you feel you think you want but don't give a fuck about all the others and all the other stuff i think it's a very inspirational very powerful lesson that you can learn every day again the moment you don't give a fuck it's very difficult for other people to hurt you or to manipulate you so if you don't give a fuck you will be stronger and become stronger and because of becoming stronger at the end you will end up in a positive vibe the moment you don't give a fuck you can only win guys because you don't give a fuck if you lose that's how we started the whole adventure we didn't give a fuck if bitcoin would have crashed to zero because we would have started over again you should do the same mentality just don't give a fuck about all the things that are like pushed into your brain indoctrinated because of the school system don't give a fuck about that box around you step outside of the box don't give a fuck about everything else and that will make you i think a very strong person and the last part of the video guys is a question of one of the followers um, he was asking me Didi which stable coins are the safest to exit out to at the end of the bull market to at the bull market top you know I don't doubt that much about stable coins I think USDT is safe I think USDC is safe I think DAI is even safe you know on Bybit for example you can even cash out to euros or hold your portfolio in euros that is possible on many other things as well like crypto.com cards all that stuff if you send your bitcoins to crypto.com or to tap or to for example uh, wirex you can put your capital also in euros there and buy bitcoin again online as well you don't need to withdraw your cash into your bank account so cashing out for me means putting it somewhere where i can quickly exchange it back to bitcoins without somebody being able to stop me uh, the only thing i will never do is to a bank account because we still don't have a bank account and the moment you cash out to a bank account you must realize they won't allow you every time that easy to buy bitcoins back you know all the questions they ask so for me cashing out into usdt usdc uh, maybe even die or for example gold in singapore the link is down below you can cash out to gold and buy bitcoins back or even to euros or us dollars on a crypto platform is a good alternative for me because i will be able to buy back my bitcoin bam like that and that's the most important thing for me to be able to buy back bitcoin because yes i want to take some profits but also yes i want to stay in a deflationary asset with the biggest part of my capital and that at the moment is bitcoin so that's my uh, tip for cashing out in stable coins.